Hello and welcome to this, a non-automotive how to fix it video. Uh, that's my usual uh, bread and butter on the channel and the videos that I produce, but today I'm actually doing a computer how to fix it or rather how to upgrade it video for my GTX 980 graphics card. This thing has been a uh, uh, years and years of hard work and lots of gaming on it, but it uses what's called a reference card uh, design which means that the cooler on it is a simple blower motor style. So you can see the fans there, it has a small heat sink here, and then it blows out the back of the computer chassis. Uh, it's very reliable, but usually is a little bit louder and also means there's a little bit less cooling performance versus other uh, uh, coolers that you can buy, which usually come stock on the graphics card. However, when I was searching around a little bit, I did find this, the Arctic Accelero Extreme 3, which is an aftermarket upgrade you can do for cooling performance on your graphics card. So while this guy is, uh, uh, you know, respective uh, 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 thickness, when you take a look at the Arctic Accelero, this is more in line with those third-party cards that you'll find with very beefy uh, cooling design to it. it has three fans very large nice uh, heat sink array to help dissipate uh, more cooling and also actually some add-on aluminum fins that we'll use to cool some of the different chipsets on the graphics card um, but when I was searching on YouTube I didn't find many um, helpful upgrade videos so I thought I would go ahead and shoot it to chronicle my own experience um, so, you know, be warned, there's, the instructions for this is just kind of speaks broadly to how to cool a graphics card as this Arctic Accelero is designed for both AMD and NVIDIA chipsets, uh, dating pretty far back uh, and even all the way up to the current um, uh, 1000 series, for instance, on the NVIDIA chipset. So I just wanted to do this as a quick chronicle. Um, in general, it's a pretty easy job. What we're really gonna do is just take off our reference card um, cooler, attach this on, and in order to do it, we'll need a couple special screwdrivers, which I'll list down below in the YouTube description. Um, so just be sure you have those and you should be able to do it yourself. So let's go ahead and get the video card out of the computer and we're underneath my desk doing this. I wanted to go ahead and shoot this just in case there were those of you who either um, it's been a while since you were inside your case or uh, uh, maybe you didn't put in your video card and you don't really know how exactly to take it in and out. So here is my modest computer rig. Um, sorry, repositioning. Uh, just doing a quick lay of the land. We have the, this is the cooling uh, for the processor, which sits underneath. And this big behemoth right here is our graphics card. So first, we're going to go ahead and disconnect anything connected to it, which probably in your case is just an HDMI or cord or two, in case on, um, you have multiple graphics cards. And then we're also going to disconnect the PCIe power. And the PCIe, it's usually going to sit right here, or it can sit even on the long end of your graphics card, depending on how it's designed. Next, we're going to take out these retaining uh, uh, screws here, and I actually just, uh, there always seems to be another hole somewhere, so I always just kind of stash it um, elsewhere in the computer. And actually, here, I'm going to, I have this on a tripod. I'm going to set up the tripod because this next step is one that we want to be sure we do carefully to help prevent any bending or flexing within the graphics card. So I'm going to hold it up as I unscrew as I unscrew this one. I'm just going to again set it down in the bottom. And then um let's zoom in here. You can see that there's a little bit of a retaining clip and on hang on a sec. Right there is just a simple click clip action that I'm going to push down and that frees up the graphics card. Oh, did I push it right? And there we go, graphics card is out. 
All right, so first things first, to get this started, we're gonna have to take all the screws off here. You can see a number of big ones, little ones, all those different ones. Um, to do this, we are gonna need a couple different sizes of screws, so uh, anywhere from a Phillips 00. Um, actually, Phillips 00 should be able to carry us okay. I have a couple other screws, as, screwdriver sizes as well, um, but in general, a good Phillips 00 is gonna really help you out in this regard. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing the screws. Um, we don't necessarily need to hold on to the screws as ultimately with the new cooler, it's just gonna have four big screws to hold us into those spots. But I'm still gonna hold on to them just in case I need to put back the cooler on any point. Um, I do have this nice anti-static uh, uh, part separator to help with capturing all the screws. Um, it's very helpful if you don't have one of those, even a simple magnetic tray can help keep everything in line. So with that, we're going to start taking our screws off. Okay, now with all of those off, we're gonna go ahead and flip it over. And I'm actually, it's been a while since I uh, took this off, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tug. And it's not giving, so there are a couple additional screws along the outside portions of the um, heat sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those as I'm going here. It's kind of funny, because it'd be nice to be like, oh yeah, you gotta do these exact same screws. but. Honestly, I forget the exact one, so I'm just gonna keep undoing screws. And that's okay, because overall, our, our objective is actually, all again, all of this is our um, uh, heat sink. We really just wanna get everything down to this uh, 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 silicon uh, PCB here. Like, it, really, we're just taking it all the way down, uh, right to the uh, hard, hard motherboard of the graphics card. Okay, with that, I'm going to give it a little bit of a wiggle here. So a couple more I think I need to get. Okay, so with that, I think we have, um, I believe we have all the disconnects done. I'm gonna actually rotate this around. And you're gonna have to apply a little bit of force because you still have the thermal paste, which has a little bit of um, uh, a tackiness to it that will keep the heat sink connected to the board. Um, be careful though, as we're undoing this, we do not want to, um, uh, tear the cord that's connecting. Uh, it's a power uh, cord for the fan that's connecting back to the board. So we just want to be gentle but forceful as we pry this up. All right, so we're going to just very carefully pry this up. There we go. Okay. So I have it loose now, and the power connection is on this side right here. So I'm gonna rotate it so that we have the slot facing away from us. There we go. Again, maybe it doesn't matter if you're not gonna use the reference cooler anymore, but hey, I'm all for preserving it and keeping it just in case. It's on there, good. go. 
rotate that up and away. Cool. And so with the cooler up, you can see our, um, let me zoom in here. And see we have uh, our four power uh, right there. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect that. There we go. <laughs> Popped right up. So now that we have the uh, heat sink off, we can go ahead and actually, we're gonna have to clean off the thermal paste uh, just to get the site ready for the next one. So um, using just simple rubbing alcohol and paper towel to wipe off both sides. Um, we're also not going to touch anything just yet, but start taking note of where we have um, thermal conductivity tape because those are gonna be places where we're going to look to have um, uh, the aluminum heat sinks that come with the card, we're going to look to be adhesing them onto there to ensure that they still remain cooled in the new uh, cooling array. All right, so I have did a quick swipe first uh, just to get some of the initial stuff off. Now I'm just using simple, um, it's ideal to have actually like 90%, 93% isopropyl alcohol. We just have 70% in our household, but that still works just fine. Just means you gotta use a little bit more elbow grease. But getting the dye nice and clean. You wanna use, um, um, you want to use a paper towel, ideally even something that's lint-free, so just be careful as you're doing it and be sure that you have everything nice and neat. I'm going to pick off a little bit of the thermal paste that's here on the side. There we go, nice and shiny. Now, you can... Um, you can use your own thermal paste with the new uh, cooler. It does come with pre-applied thermal paste, so if you want to use that as well, more than welcome to, um, but just calling that out in advance. Okay, so now that we have the heat sink off, we'll go ahead and put on our individual aluminum heat sinks that came with the, um, uh, with the kit. I'm gonna be honest, I don't actually think you need to put these on because, um, when you take a look at the previous cooler, and sorry, I have plenty of junk piling up over here. When you take a look at the previous cooler, the only actually cooling contact was the copper plate itself. Um, and then there was you know, a connection and then it connected back to the heat sink. This right here, plastic. And you can see where the imprints are of the thermal pads that were there before. So that does lead me to suspect that you would actually would be fine just leaving the pads on and um, not needing to do that. So consider this then an additional step that you don't necessarily need. However, I am gonna go ahead and do a couple at least. I don't think I'm gonna do all of them because there are some, it's just random circuitry that is covered by pads here. And I don't really wanna be gluing a heat sink there. However, um, some of these modules here, they fit perfectly, you know, like right here, they fit perfectly with a heat sink. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try this out. Um, but uh, be mindful of your graphics card and what the layout is within it. So again, this is a 980. However, if you're using an AMD or you know any other PCB design, you might be having a different setup. Don't necessarily need to do the heat sink um, applications. So to get it started, I'm gonna take off the thermal pads off of these bad boys. They'll come off. And thermal pads you can go ahead and keep and hold on to as well. Um, they're, they're nice and sticky. So I'll put this in my parts tray. And the process we're gonna use for applying the heat sinks, we're gonna use an adhesive thermal paste. So it is one that is gonna lock these heat sinks in place. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're gonna be doing this and not exactly sure if this is you know, a permanent solution because anything we adhese here, it's gonna stick to the card and make it not very easy to put the reference card back on. 
Okay, so with heat sinks off, literal to the instructions, take an eraser and you want to scrub, you want to rough up the tops of our chipsets. This is to help ensure that the thermal adhesive will have something to adhese onto and not dirt or oil or any re residual stuff. First time I've ever had to erase a graphics card. To add a little bit more, I'm gonna actually do a quick wipe down. Okay, so with our uh, chipsets buffed up now, and I went over carefully again with an eraser, there is actually some residual or residue on it. I wouldn't have really guessed, but. Um, I did notice that they came a little bit clearer. So again, the reason why we do that is so that our thermal adhesive here has something to stick to on the other end. So what I'm gonna do is just very carefully, I'm gonna apply uh, individual heat sink to each of these chipsets. Um, I'm just gonna go with a very minimal amount. So we're doing the pea size method across the board, as that should be more than enough. I also don't want to overdo it just so that we don't have any overrun of um, thermal adhesive onto the board. So very minimal and careful amounts. All right, and there we go. So uh, again, just a very minimal amount of paste. A little bit goes a long way because we don't want any of it slopping over and running the risk of shorting out any other additional circuitry. So with our first batch of heat sinks on, we're gonna put our second set of heat sinks onto the VRM here. Um, I realized that I actually hadn't really described the different components within the graphics card. <laughs> Um, so the first uh, modules that we we're putting onto were memory chips, so that stores the memory on board. And then this is the VRM, which handles all the power coming into the board through here and just modulates it and changes phase so it can be used by the graphics card. I'm gonna really emphasize, um, while the first bit was very easy because it's large chipsets, it's easy to line up the heat sink perfectly with it. We are going to be doing some dangerous work if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I'm gonna walk you through this, but I do emphasize that um, it's not for the faint of heart. And if you wanna skip this part and just leave the thermal pad over top, so it would look something like this. It's a horrible job, but looks something like this. Looks something like this. Uh, that's okay. 
uh, because this thermal pad is still providing thermal conductivity. The reason why it's dangerous uh, for us to proceed is because there's a lot of inner circuitry here, and we just have to be sure we're not gonna short it out um, by using the heat sinks. While the chip modules are fine, there's plenty of, here I'm gonna zoom in, there's a number of other inner workings that you can see, such as like right along here and there. But we're gonna take steps to help insulate those areas, be sure they are not getting electrical connectivity and can overall be charged, or, or sorry, be cooled. So to start, we're just gonna simply take a piece of uh, uh, cloth, a lint-free cloth or a, a paper towel and just start by very carefully wiping away. You can see some of that residue there that we saw in the other chips. So we're just going to start off by first doing a very gentle pass. Cool. And then after having done that, we'll take our handy dandy eraser again. Use that as a second pass to really buff these modules. All right. And then once more over with handy dandy paper towel. Cool. And then finally, sorry for the autofocus there. I'm going to go over once more with some isopropyl alcohol, just very carefully and gently scrubbing my lovely nodes to get them ready. The other ones we're just going to leave in place. They still help um, with just some general cooling. They help with general cooling of other components. And are too small to get heat synced. Okay, very good. Okay, so with that, we are ready to go with the next step. We're going to take this um, insulation tape that came with the kit. Uh, it's meant to corner off any um, careful circuitry areas that we need to be sure don't get um, touched by the metal because the metal to metal contact is what we don't want. That is what causes shorts. And in this case, a short would result in potential failure of and death of the graphics card. So we want to be very careful as we're doing this. So let me reposition. So the key areas that we're going to focus on putting tape on are along the outside. So any of these individual, zoom in, I'm going to get a better pointer here. So you see like these modules here, we're going to corner those off. We're going to run a very thin strip here and here. And then also uh, going down a little bit, we're going to corner off this area and around the bottom most part. That way we can be sure we adhese the heat sinks, don't have any connection with any of these um, solder points and keep everything nice and neat. So to do this, we're gonna go very slowly. So, um, and also the good news too is we don't need to worry about these screw holes much anymore because the connection point for the new heat sink is going to be, uh, you can see the holes right there, which are gonna be right here. Sorry, still like super zoomed in. So uh, let's go ahead and start measuring stuff off. So I'm just going to very carefully just kind of line it up. Just take note of places to cut. Do this very nice and like. Zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So. Again, we're just taking very simple measurement cuts. Hopefully getting this adhesive tape to come off. There we go. So it's just very clear and simple adhesive tape. And 
if you have to overlay some with like um, if you're having to stick it in you know areas that might overlap with the node that's fine because again our focus is just to minimize any connection points that the nodes might have and also if you find that stuff's not sticking it's okay to go over it a little bit more with a paper towel just to scrub it up so I'll just kind of work through these critical areas All right, we have everything in place. As you can see through some of that video footage, the tape was a little bit persnickety putting it down, but just go nice and slow. Again, being sure that we're covering all of those different bits. We only want the black nodes exposed the entire time. Um, as we're going through it, you just wanna also be sure you're just grounding yourself, just keeping everything nice and clean, good and slow, and you can work your way through it. Okay, so I have our heat sinks in place uh, and we're getting close and ready to install. So to make the process as good and easy as possible, we're actually gonna take the inversion that we did on the memory. Rather than putting the glue, uh, the thermal adhesive onto the bottom of the heat sink, I'm gonna apply a very, very tiny amount. Again, we don't want this to be going anywhere on the board, just a tiny, tiny amount onto the top of each node and then firmly applying the heat sink. That way uh, it'll bind, but also won't have any concern about, did I hit the exact node? Because not all of these are perfectly in line. So we don't want there to be too much slop uh, as it were. So what I'll do is I'm gonna just use um, you could use a pen, pencil, really anything with a fine point, but I have this kind of handy dandy, um, uh, <laughs> for lack of a better word, pry bar, uh, tech pry bar. And I'm just gonna very carefully and gently get a dollop, so you can see that, just like a little dollop, and tap it. So this, this uh, glue is twofold. It's both to adhese the heat sink to the module, but also it's thermally conductive, but not electrically conductive, which is good because we don't want, um, we don't want uh, electrical conduction going through. So I'll take our heat sink very, I'll well, just kind of set it in place. I'm checking around just to make sure that it's not touching anything it shouldn't be, which it's not. And then I'll keep going. Um, in general, I'm gonna set everything gently on top and then I'll go for a gentle press at the end of it, just to give you a sense of order. And if you screw up, like I just did, uh, just take your paper towel and gently wipe away. And with that, I'm just gently tapping uh, the heat sinks into place. 
just to be sure that we got everything covered that we need to. So I'm gonna let this cure now. Um, again, the focus of the glue is just to get it enough to stick. Um, so if any of these come off after the fact, it's okay to just go back and have to go uh, through readhesing. But in general, want it to not have too much on there um, so that it slops around. So, oops, sorry. So now we're just gonna wait an hour and let this cure and then come back to do our final heat seek install. All right, now that we've given proper time for our heat sinks to dry, let's get things prepped to do the actual uh, main heat sink install. So first we have to put some spacers in to give us uh, the proper spacing. There's a guide that is online and comes with it too um, that indicates which holes we're to be using. So I'll just be using that as I have been throughout this whole thing. So what we do is we take the adhesive off, stick it to the spacer, and then we're gonna be using the outermost hole, which you can see there, the one that's furthest away, um, as our uh, mounting point. So I'll go ahead and put these spacers in with their adhesive tapes to give us the space we need. The next thing we need to do is actually uh, get our little foam here, our non-conductive foam, and then we're going to be placing this on to the board. That way our back plate right here, here actually let me frame this up a little bit better. That way our back plate can sit there and not make contact with the, um, uh, with the back of the board. So we simply take this off. And then we fit the adhesive just right in the middle there. Don't need to worry about pressing it too much because it's going to get pressed in when we put the back plate on. And then we get ready to do back plate. Actually, one last uh, quick thing before we do that. I realized reading through the instructions, um, which, by the way, uh, you can tell it's not perfect English, uh, but that's OK. That's OK. We can work with that. Um, there are some additional spacers. and. It doesn't say to use adhesive, but there's another thing of adhesive, so I'm going to use it because that's going to be a lot easier to hold everything in place. All right, so now that we have the spacers in, um, we're, I went ahead and put the back plate on as well as the screws. And uh, we need to put a washer in between the cooler and the graphics card in order to get everything to mount properly and correctly. So to do that, I'm gonna suggest that we actually just take a piece of paper, press it firmly, and flip it. Trying to hold all the screws in at the same time so that they're all there. There we go. And then we're going to take uh, these black spacers here. Go ahead and try to punch these out. Oh, and the spacers have an adhesive on them. That's a nice surprise. Which means once you get these spacers in place, you should be good to go, actually. Oops. And then what we're going to do is we take our mother, or we take our, uh, not motherboard, uh, main cooler, and we're going to try to line it up with all of the respective screws all at the same time. Easy enough, right? Let me make sure that we got it on this side too. Oh, popped up a little bit, back in. Cool. And at this point too, we have, since um, we didn't have to worry about putting on our own thermal paste, we just used the pre-applied one. But obviously, if you're gonna put thermal paste on, do it before you mate everything together. And then 
to get all the uh, screws starting to engage, <laughs> I learned this trick uh, uh, a couple years ago and it never seems to fail. Um, it's jank as all get out though. Move the card slowly and carefully to the edge. So keeping all the screws engaged, do it on a table you don't like. So I'm moving it over. That way I can expose one screw. Make sure everything is here. <laughs> Again, super jank. So that way I can catch one screw. And then start it. There we go. So I did that. That way I can start threading one and then I'll keep working it around the edge. Don't, don't tighten it all the way, just enough to get it engaged and start locking everything into place. We'll do our final tightening in a star method so that way we can have everything be nice and even. Very good. Very right, cool. And the last one, just lift up four. Now, for the rest of um, how we're gonna tighten everything up, we wanna do it in a star method so that the weight gets evenly distributed out. And I'm literally checking the instructions too just to be sure I'm not missing anything, which I'm not. So we're just gonna tighten this down until it's uh, nice and tight. So um, in general, you just wanna go opposite corners and just keep doing that until all the screws tighten all the way up. We want it to be nice and firm. That way it gives good connection between the, um, the heat sink and the uh, uh, die on the graphics card so we get maximum cooling performance. And if you're getting flex, that's good. It means everything is doing what it needs to. Flex in the cooling plate, that is. All right, and with that, our last thing that we need to do is take our power connection for our fan control and sneak that around. We can figure out a nicer, neater way to have this thing sneak around. Um, and then just connect that underneath here. So this is on the side where the PCI connection is. And there you go. And so with the cooler back in, uh, we are good to go. So I'll go ahead and put this back in the computer and then we'll run through a couple benchmarks to see how performance looks. I did a couple tests on some synthetic benchmarks as well as in game. Um, so we'll see how thermals and graphics uh, hold up across the board. All right, and just to show for reinstallation, we're gonna take our card. And we're gonna very carefully Line it back up with its original slot. Um, though something I guess to call attention to, since we did put a much larger cooler on it, you can see the previous one was an inch or two skinnier. Um, if you do find yourself needing more room, consider moving to another slot or maybe having to move um, other things that are underneath it down a slot or two to make room for it. So we have that in. I'm going to focus over here on the pins. So right here, remember I put those pins down below for safekeeping. So we can quickly grab them. Something else too to consider, since we're going up in size in our cooler count, we're going to a three fan cooler, which has a lot of weight, especially it's a lot of weight that's going to be centered right on the die, is uh, considering any possible GPU sag 
which is the graphics card sagging down. There's a couple different solutions for it. One of them is uh, uh, companies that do make brackets, which you can fit underneath here that then attach. Hang on a sec, I'm talking, trying to talk as I'm screwing here. And uh, when you do screw this in, you want to support the GPU up so you can get a nice tight fit. Um, there are companies that make brackets, which can slot in right here and give a nice stiff and rigid uh, uh, support here. As you can see, there's a little bit of flex. Um, though a much simpler solution, just get something that is the length of your case that you can use to prop it up. Uh, what I'll do for now is first make sure that we don't have any fans in the way. And what I'll do is actually the PCIe connection here, pretty rigid, and so I'm gonna use it a little bit as a shim. Make sure it's not in, or in the way of anything. And what you could do, depending on how your case is, here, I'm gonna throttle this up, is if you're able to route your PCI connection, so I might actually just route this up here and then have it come all the way down. That way I can put a little bit of tension on the cable and that can help hold the card up, which is, um, overall a helpful thing. But for now, just reconnect. Oh, let me sit up here. Of course, the easiest thing, right? All right, so I'm reconnected here. Just making sure we're good. And then we'll reconnect the HDMI cord in the back, and then we'll be ready to fire up for benchmarks. All right, all good. There you go. And with that, we have this lovely, much beefier cooler connected to our graphics card. It's gonna really help improve our overall thermal performance, might even afford us a little bit more overclocking, which is our hope overall with this. Um, that's why we were putting heat sinks on the memory chips and the, um, the VRM as well. So I uh, really hope that this helped. I might do a tag along video to uh, show some of the different performance measurements. Uh, but overall, hope this helped with installing. Um, again, if you're using a different graphics card, some of the things might be in different places, but just be uh, nice and careful as you proceed along and you should have a good shot. Thanks for watching, guys.